Hi guys, I want to give you a quick overview of the new features in Profex 4.3.2, which was just released. At the beginning of the video I will also show you how to upgrade to this version on Windows, because I added a new and more convenient upgrade mechanism. The new upgrade mechanism was introduced with version 4.3.1, so it only works if you installed this version with the installer package from the Profex website, but not if you installed it with the portable bundle. So if you are using version 4.3.1 from the installer package on Windows, you can now follow the steps I'm going to show to upgrade to the new version 4.3.2 and to any coming version in the future. To start the upgrade process, we first have to go to the Profex installation folder. That's typically on C, Program Files, Profex. And in there we find the maintenance tool application. We can run it and then select the option Update Components, click Next. And now it will show us all the components for which a new version is available online. So installed version is 4.3.1 and the new version is 4.3.2 released on March 27. We select all of them, click Next and then click Update. And now it will download the new components and install them. Then we can click Finish. We don't need to click Restart, just Finish. And now if we start Profex, we have the new version 4.3.2. The first new feature I want to show is in Tools. It's a browser for reference structures. If we open it, we will see all the reference structures stored in the Profex database. So all the structures we can also select from the Add Remove dialog and we can just display the HKL lines as a list or as a graph at the bottom. Let's make this a bit bigger. It shows us the HKL indices, the two theta position or, or in the D value of the position and the relative intensity and also the, the stick pattern at the bottom. And we can also show the um, structure file for BGMN. And this is really all this dialog does. It does. It only displays the content in the internal reference structure database. Another small new feature is found in the locations menu. There is a new entry log file. When you click it, it opens the explorer at the location where the Profex log file is stored. So when you need access to the log file, for example, when you ask me for support because you found a problem, I usually ask you to send me the log file. This is uh, the easiest way to find it and to attach it to an email. There are also some improvements in the structure import dialog file, import structure file. When we access the COD database, we have this uh, retrieve COD database dialog where we can search in the database and download the structures from there. Now we have two new search fields, the COD ID and the DOI, the document identifier. And this is convenient if we already know the ID of the structure files we want to download. For example, if if we search in the, on the COD website or if we just know which structures we want to download, we can now enter the IDs directly in this field. And we can enter multiple ones separated by space character. And now it gives us exactly the entries we entered here and we can select them and download. There's actually even a faster way to do the same. We can even bypass the search dialog and go to enter COD IDs. And then we get just a text field and we again enter all the IDs we want to download separated by space or by new line. And it will download the zip files directly and convert to a BGMN structure file format and verify. And then we can just save all of them. When we close, they will be indexed. 
and using the new tool, the new reference browser, we will find the new calcite structures here. Then when we open a a scan file that does not contain any wavelength information, for example, an XY text file. Profex applies a wavelength that is configured in the Edit Preferences dialog. It's the default wavelength. In this case, it was set to um, Chromium K alpha 1, but this is actually wrong. So this file was not measured with Chromium radiation, it was measured with copper. K alpha 1 radiation, but it just uses the default wavelength we configure in the preferences dialog. And now in this new version we have a new feature in project. We can override this and change the wavelength by selecting set project wavelength. Now we select copper K alpha 1, apply. We can apply it to multiple projects. And now it's using the correct wavelength and also the correct uh, conversion to D values. And the last new feature I want to show is related to instrument configurations. If we modify our current instrument configuration and then start the computation of the profile, this process is now multi-threaded. So it's using all CPU cores and it's a lot faster than in previous version where only one CPU core was used. So that's all I wanted to show. Of course there are also a lot of small bug fixes. I fixed two crashes with the help of two users. A big thank you for reporting the crashes and for helping me fix them. And I hope you enjoy the new version and see you for the next video. Bye bye.